Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. It's Cynic Alex, and today we're going to make good on the promise to do a review for the character that you, the community, chose out of the two new speed heroes. And you guys picked Silk, so we're going to do it. However, before we jump into it, I want to tell you guys there is a surprise at the end of the video, and it's Marvel related, so you should check it out. Anyways, jumping into the review, guys, let's check out Silk. Silk used to be at the forefront of the meta along with the likes of Loki and Hulkbuster, but she has since then fallen off. I would still say that she's in around the top 8 or top 10 speed characters uh, you know, in the game, but that really doesn't say a lot for her. Some pros of the character are that she has a guard hit, so she uh, is very easy for new players to use, and her uniform makes her an extreme threat against... Uh, PvP uh, scenarios in, in that sense. The downside to the character is that like a lot of other speed characters her damage and her burst is really non-existent so she struggles to score high in things like extreme alliance battles, she struggles against infinity Thanos or very high defense bosses and she's just not equipped with enough of the tools that we've come to expect debuff, immunity, you know high burst, buffing, uh, you know huge attack increases from characters that we see now in the meta, Sharon Rogers, etc. But let's jump into the character skills and see just what's so special about Silk. So her first skill is a web. The web applies for a base duration of three seconds and it does mediocre damage. Keep in mind that although it's typed as physical in Shadowland, it will be reflected back at you as though it were energy damage. It's just a tiny quirk, don't know why. Her second skill, look behind you, will send you towards the enemy and it's an iframe skill so that's a great one to close the gap on your enemies and we'll talk about why that's important later. Her third skill is the one I mentioned that makes her good for new players to pick up. It's got a guard hit when you max out the skill to level 6. It's 8 hits for 8 seconds which is premium. It also does some damage and applies a bleed in Shadowland which is nice. Her uh, four star passive gives her immunity to web, which is nice to counter other spiders, and it increases her crit rate by 10%. That is actually a meaningful amount, and we'll see it synergize with her tier two passive. Her fourth star skill, or her fifth, her fifth star skill, her fourth skill, uh, Silk Spinner, is actually a skill that changes a lot with her uniform. Without her uniform, the skill is quite boring and it has a long wind up. With her uniform, however, this is as close as we're going to get to a Silk Burst Damage attack, and it's got a very amazing kind of blender animation. And then the Yo-Yo applies a 3 second web, and she kind of plays with her webbed up opponent and punches them back and forth. Very entertaining. Her leadership is kind of bad, it's additional bleed damage uh, that she applies to the whole team to apply to the enemy, 10% chance, uh, or when crit, sorry, when critting for 10%. Really not that big of a deal, only ever applies in Shadowland. However, the big uh, draw for Silk, aside from the webbing, is actually her tier 2 passive. She has one of the strongest tier 2 passives for speed characters. It gives her 15% ignore do or guaranteed dodge, which is not bad. 37% increased uh, crit rate, or crit damage, sorry, which is excellent. And then a whopping 42% guaranteed crit rate. That's almost Wolverine numbers at 50-50. It's very close, and it makes her an extreme threat to crit for massive numbers repeatedly, in addition to the fact that she has dodge so she can avoid taking damage. So what you want to do uh, from that is probably build up her crit rate and crit damage like we've talked about with characters like Wolverine. As far as the skill rotations go, uh, for World Boss you want to open with the third skill but you want to cancel it as soon as you see the guard hit uh, icon show up above your character portrait because you don't really need the damage, it's not that much. Then you want to go into the fourth skill which does the most damage and because you've just done the third skill you have that protection. Then you want to go into the fifth skill. You can try to do the whole animation, but you may need to cancel it into the second skill, which is an iframe. And then you want to go back into the third skill. You very rarely, if ever, do the first skill because it's a motorcycle. It doesn't do that much damage. However, in Shadowlands, I will suggest to you a different kind of rotation. She's not useful for Extreme Alliance Battle, so I won't talk about that. But in Shadowlands, you can crowd control, you can web and stun and bind. So if you want to be more aggressive, you can open with the second skill, which will close the gap on your enemies and bring you very close to them, hopefully both of them, and then go into the fifth skill. Hopefully that will web up both of your opponents, and now you've got the upper hand, especially if it's on a relay. Then I would go into the third skill. You can cancel it or not because it's got that extra damage. Then the fourth skill. Then end with the first skill. 
to increase that webbing and have that webbing rolling all the time. You separate the fifth skill and the first skill. You don't want to do them back to back. So you maximize the amount of time that the opponent is webbed. For maximum efficiency, you definitely want to pick up her web suit uniform. It is useful to have because there is synergy with other uh, uniforms that are required for high extreme alliance battle scores. I'm not sure if it's um, Doctor Strange or Sharon Rogers that needs Silk's uniform, but it's, it's someone who is or used to be part of the ABX meta. Um, but the most important part is that it increases web duration by two seconds, so it almost doubles that three second duration up to five seconds. So if you use those skills with a little bit of a pause in between, that's 10 seconds of crowd controlled, webbed, mummified enemies. Brendan Fraser would be proud. It also changes the fourth skill as we talked about, makes it much more uh, zippy, faster animation, and it deals a lot more damage. As far as the gear goes for Silk, we have physical attack and crit rate, which is great. We have physical defense and crit damage, which again, the crit damage is good to synergize with her tier two passive. We've got HP, which is always nice to see as a top stat. And then we have movement speed, which is okay. And then we have dodge and cooldown. So she's got almost every single necessary or desirable stat. The only one missing, say it with me now, is ignore defense. So you will probably need to roll ignore defense either on your fourth gear or on your ISO or on your Uru. Speaking of Uru, you want to go with two physical attack Urus for the first uh, you know, eight slots, two, four, six, eight. Then you want to go, I think, with at least two dodge or two crit damage Urus. It depends whether you want Silk to do more damage or be more evasive. Both of those will synergize with her tier two passive, but I wouldn't give her the dodge ones unless she's tier two because there's no guaranteed dodge on a tier one Silk. And then the fifth Uru slot, I would leave it open for either ignore defense, which you may need, especially if you don't have a lot from cards, or skill cooldown. But that's how it shakes out for her, her Uru. As far as her obelisk goes, I cannot recommend an obelisk for Silk that has a damage proc because she only has a guard hit, she only has one iframe, and although those two things are good, she's still a bit fragile as a speed character. And she's not going to compete for Extreme Alliance Battle, so she doesn't need that extra burst damage. She is, however, a very serious threat in PvP scenarios. Even now in Timeline, she can hold her own, especially given the type advantage against Doctor Strange and Sharon Rogers, and now Jean Grey. So what I would suggest is an obelisk that centers around uh, invincibility. I would pair that with something like crit damage and crit rate. That would probably be your most... Uh, desirable offensive defensive combination but you could go for something like dodge and immune to guard break and invincibility or dodge and crit rate or dodge and crit damage and invincibility there's some flexibility when it comes to silks uh, obelisk but i think those are your best options the ignore dodge is honestly not that useful she already has the web immunity and she does more damage than all of the other spiders except miles morales against uh, villains but that's for another review as far as the ISO 8 set goes for Silk, I would recommend an offensive set. Um, because you're going with an obelisk that has invincibility, because you sh she's got guaranteed dodge, and because she's got the guard hit, you're really not going to make too much use of binary power or uh, drastic density. She doesn't have a lot of HP as a speed character, so you can take advantage of the fact that she's going to be in the fight for a long time to get those offensive procs of you know 20 to 40% all attack going to boost her damage and get those high crits uh, rolling. So again, for offensive sets, you wanna either go for Power of Angry Hulk or Overdrive. You wanna skip Hawk's Eye because she's got skill cooldown on her gear and you can always give it to her and cover up her weaknesses on either her Uru or her Uniform. So you can roll on the Uniform options some uh, skill cooldown. Additionally, if you wanna know what to roll for her Uniform, Dodge is an excellent stat because it synergizes well with her uh, tier 2 passive and then HP is something that I would go for just to make her a little bit uh, beefier as far as farming uh, if you guys don't know silk is a bio selector character What that means is you can't get her from any type of game mode But from Shadowland selectors or other selectors that you get from the store that you get from your daily chest from the Alliance store You can select her and she's usually in the top 10 because she's a very uh, popular character and she's very cool looking so that's how you obtain the character. You can farm the bios that way through Shadowland. You can gear her up very quickly. You can rank her up with uh, tier two tickets, rank up tickets, all that kind of stuff, and get her going. Overall, 
I would say that Silk is an interesting character that I think still has a place in the meta because of her almost overwhelming crowd control ability. We have a lot more uh, debuff protection now in terms of leaderships and in terms of four star passives, but still there is that lurking danger of Silk. And I've seen the wreckage that she can lay down, especially in Alliance Conquest, where she can web up two, sometimes even all three opponents, and sometimes she opens the fight with that web. If that happens, you can kiss that run goodbye. You're losing those characters. They're going into the mummy zone. So I think for those reasons, she's always going to have even a small niche in the game. And I really do enjoy the character for that reason. And I can't wait to try her out in some, some conquest stuff and give you guys some highlights. So let me know what you guys think of Silk. Let me know what you think of the review. And also guys, let me know if you want to see a review of Squirrel Girl, because that was the other option. Finally, guys, before we go, I gotta hit you with a big set of news. There's a new Marvel game. I don't know if I'm supposed to talk about it, but I'm gonna throw it at the end of the video because nobody who could be lurking and not a fan would actually watch this long. The, vi the, 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 the game is called Marvel um, End of Days or end, end Time Arena. Marvel End Time Arena. You can tell I didn't practice this. So the game is actually an acronym for Meta, and it's a MOBA just like League of Legends, Heroes of the Storm, Dota, but it includes Marvel characters. It's only available in, in Korea right now. It's only available in Korean, and it's in closed beta or open beta, but I got access, and I'm going to be live streaming it every day on Twitch. So if you like MOBAs and you like Marvel, come and check out a brand new game that I can guarantee no other English streamer is streaming in the world, probably. Anyways, guys, I'm pretty excited about it, that's why I goofed up some of that uh, intro for you guys. But of course, if you like what you see, I hope to see you again tomorrow. Take care.